I have never done a top 30 list, so I have no idea how long this video is going to be, but I'm going to try my best not to make it too long. So yeah, let's get to it. Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking. Here's my ranking of the top 30 best animated films according to Rotten Tomatoes. Yes, you've been watching my rankings lately. I did my ranking of the top 20 best movies of all time according to IMDb. Then I did the same with uh, Rotten Tomatoes, the top 20 best movies of all time according to Rotten Tomatoes. And I ranked all those films from at least favorite to my favorite. I thought I'd do another one for Rotten Tomatoes. This is the last one for Rotten Tomatoes I'm going to do. And also I'm going to do this list to celebrate that I'm going to be on a show. Yes, I'm going to be on a YouTube show. Rhino Tool, check out his YouTube channel. In the next few weeks, I'm going to be on his show called Rotten or Fresh. It's a game show about Rotten Tomatoes. It's like knowing your movie knowledge and stuff. And yeah, I'm going to be on that show within a few weeks. I don't know when it's going to air on his YouTube channel, but check out his YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below to his YouTube page and all the episodes of Rotten or Fresh. He's got two episodes now, and they're great shows, and I'm going to be on those shows. So I thought to celebrate Rotten or Fresh, because it's about Rotten Tomatoes, I'd do another Rotten Tomatoes-themed video. And I thought I'd talk about the animated list, because Rotten Tomatoes has a lot of top 10, top 20, top 30 lists of all times. And I thought I'd go to the animated list, because I love animated films, and I went to the top 100 greatest animated films of all time, according to Rotten Tomatoes, and I took the 30 best, what they think are the 30 best animated films of all time, and I thought I'd rank them from, at least my, from my least favorite to my favorite. Again, I don't always agree with Rotten Tomatoes, and I don't fully agree with this list. There's a lot of films on here. There's a reason I did 30 as well. I was going to do 20, but when I looked at the 30, I'm like, okay, yeah, the ones on the 30 are a little better, so yeah. I just decided to do 30, and this might take a while, because I've never in my life done a top 30 list, or a ranking of 30 films. Oh, I think I have. What's the biggest ranking? My Hugh Jackman ranking was pretty long, but yeah. I'll try not to be too long, but it's going to be a bit long in this video, because it's 30 films I'm talking about, and yeah. These are the 30 best animated films, according to Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm going to rank all 30 of them, from my least favorite to my favorite, and I'm going to compare, see how similar I am to Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah, let's get to it. And obviously, before the ranking, I'm going to read you the list of the 30 films. This is what Rotten Tomatoes thinks are the 30 best films of all time. Alright, this, the, the, this is their list, not my list, but yeah. Number one is Inside Out. Inside Out, yeah. Of course. Uh, number two is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Number three is Toy Story 3. Number four is Toy Story 2, five is Zootopia, six is Up, seven is Finding Nemo, eight is Pinocchio, uh, number nine is Toy Story, ten is Wally. -E. <laughs> eleven is The Lego Movie, twelve is Finding Dory, thirteen is Shaun the Sheep Movie, fourteen is Moana, fifteen is My Life is a Zucchini, sixteen is Ratatouille, 17 is Kubo and the Two Strings, 18 is How to Train Your Dragon, 19 is The Incredibles, 20 is Chicken Run, 21 is 101 Dalmatians, 22 is Fantasia, 23 is Tower, 24 is Monsters, Inc., 25 is The Iron Giant, 26 is Beauty and the Beast, 27 is Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is not a full animated film, but I get where they're going with it. 28 is Spirited Away, 29 is Your Name, and 30 is Song of the Sea. All incredibly great films, and yeah, I'm going to do a ranking of all 30 of them. Some of them deserve to be on there, some of them not so much. I'm going to grab my list. This is my list right here, right here. All right, this is my ranking of all 30 of those movies from my least favorite to my favorite. All right, coming at number 30 for me is Chicken Run. Chicken Run is my least favorite out of these 30 films. That's not to bash the film as itself. It's not a bad movie. It is a stop-motion animated film basically about all these chickens. They're all eventually going to die on this farmland because these farmers are going to eventually cook them and stuff. So it's about this other chicken voiced by, I think, Mel, Mel Gibson. Is it Mel Gibson? He says he's broken out of, like, uh, barns before, and he's planning to bust all these chickens out of this, uh, farm and get them to safety and stuff, so it's like a prison break movie with chickens. And it's fine, the animation's good, and there's some really interesting characters, like the lead character played by Mel Gibson's really interesting. 
I wish uh, the other characters were more interesting. I wish the villains were more creepy. I wish the story, uh, like the premise, I love that premise, but it's not very funny. This movie could have been so much funnier, and it's really not that funny. It's more style, because the animation is really lovely, and I do like the lead character, but the villains weren't really strong for me, and as much as I love the premise, the story didn't captivate me, and I wish there was a lot more comedy in the film, but the film itself is fine, but it's definitely the weaker one out of these 30 films. So yeah, it's okay. Coming number 29 is Monsters, Inc. Yes, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this one. I'm not a big lover of Monsters, Inc. Oh, do -do -do. That's like that's like Bill Cosby or something. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. But anyways, I, lo I, I do love Monsters, Inc. Like, I was just kidding. Like, I enjoy Monsters, Inc. very much. I can't stand Monsters University, but Monsters, Inc. is great. I love Sully. I love Michael Zawski and stuff. Randall. I love their relationship with Boo. It's a really adorable relationship. The animation's really cool and stuff. There's really enjoyable scenes. I love the world of these monsters. They survive on the screams of children. That's such a cool idea for a story. Again, I just wish it was funnier and stuff, and I wish there was a lot more sad moments. Like, the sad moments with him as Sully and Boo is a little sad, but it's nothing like Tear Me Apart, like Toy Story, any of the Toy Story films bring in. Yeah, I wish there was a lot more thought-provoking things in it, because in Pixar, they bring in a lot of cool, like, social commentary or really smart things, and it's just kind of like, you know, it's kind of a paint-by-numbers kids movie. It's still a really enjoyable and very fun movie, and I do enjoy these characters. And there are still funny moments, but I wish it was more funnier, I wish it was smarter and stuff, and I wish it was a little more emotional, but the film itself is still a great Pixar film, and I still really enjoy it. Coming number 28 is Shaun the Sheep movie. I actually gave a review of this movie, and I actually ended up really enjoying it. It is a stop-motion animated film. There has no dialogue. There is no dialogue in this film, and yeah, I, I just go watch my review of it. I actually really enjoyed this film. I actually was pretty excited that it was nominated for Best Animated Feature at the Oscars. I think it is a very fun, very enjoyable film, and I think it adds more comedy when there is no dialogue, when you don't know what these characters are saying and stuff. It, it's basically about these sheep trying to get back to their home and stuff, and it's really funny. There's a lot of funny slapstick, and there's a lot of homages to silent films like Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. It is a really good. This movie is more geared for an older audiences. I think an older audience will appreciate this film more. I think some kids might enjoy like the funny sheep and stuff, but it's more geared to an older audience, and that's why I personally enjoyed it. It's no, it's no brilliant masterpiece film, but it is really enjoyable. Coming number twenty-seven is Pinocchio. Pinocchio is. It's a good movie. I understand so many people love this. this movie. Is like one of the like greatest Disney movies of all time, according to critics and fans. It's a good movie. It is so good. There's a lot of great messages to it. There's some good songs in it. The animation is gorgeous. It's dark as shit when it needs to be, especially when they go to the freaking Funland thing, that freaking amusement park, and they all get turned into donkeys. That, like, that scene, like, screwed me up as a child. That scared the shit out of me. They're all drinking booze and smoking cigars. Like, this is a dark film. However, there's a few scenes I just didn't like. I, there's some characters. I couldn't get into the character Pinocchio. I couldn't stand Jimmy Cricket. I thought they were just awful characters. And they're the lead characters. Pinocchio is such a boring character. He's kind of a bratty character. Jimmy Cricket is a very irritating sidekick and stuff. And just... I just, I, I couldn't gravitate more to the characters more, even though I like the story and I love the animation, and there's some very beautiful songs in this film, and I love that it goes batshit crazy and dark, but I don't hold it on the pedestal like most people do. I don't praise it like most people do. I do say it is a great film, but I don't, like, lo I love it like most people do. I still think it's a great Disney movie, but I don't praise it like most people do. Coming number 26 is 101 Dalmatians. 101 Dalmatians is weird because I think Pinocchio is a far better film. It has better animation, it has better songs and stuff. It's a way better story. It's a way, it's got better writing and stuff, but I've seen 101 Dalmatians way more. I loved this movie more as a child than Pinocchio. Pinocchio was never a favorite of mine when I was a kid. As I got older, I appreciated the film more, but 101 Dalmatians was almost kind of like a vice versa. I loved it as a kid, but as I got older, I realized there was a lot more issues, and there was not much to the film. There was not much depth to it. There was still, like, a lot of cute scenes in it. The animation is still really good. Cruella DeVille is a fantastic villain. I love her henchman, Horace and Jasper. 
The lead human characters are very bland characters. Even the dogs, as adorable as shit as they are, they're not very interesting and not very funny characters. The movie is good thanks to its animation and how fast-paced it can be. The animation is gorgeous. And the villains. The villains make this film. Horace and Jasper and Cruella DeVille. Great villains. And I love the cat. The cat in the movie that saves the kitties, that saves the doggies, sorry, that saves the Dalmatians, that freaking cat is awesome. What a badass character that is. I, just, I find it a more watchable film. Like, if you put the Blu-rays of Pinocchio and 101 Dalmatians both in front of me, I'd watch 101 Dalmatians, even though I know Pinocchio is a way better film. So that's why I ranked it lower, because I just, I like it more. It's not better, but I just enjoy it more. Coming to number 25 is the movie Tower. If you have not seen this movie, turn this review off right now, come back to it later, go see this film. Watch it however you can, watch this. This is a, an incredible film. This is amazing, amazing this film. There's no need for it to be an animation, but that kind of adds to the unpleasantness of the story and how, like, it's, it almost feels like Waking Life-esque when you watch the film. This is a movie based on a true story about a real event that happened in Texas, 1966, I think. That's when the, the sniper happened in that school in Texas and took all those people hostage and all those people died in that college. That's what the story is about. It's about an 85-minute film about this person, this sniper, taking these students hostage and everything. And it's all done in animation. And it is a phenomenal film. The animation is fantastic. The story is well done. The actors they got in this movie are fantastic. The writing is so freaking good. The only reason it's not super long on this list is because I consider this movie absolutely fantastic. It's not very watchable. It is really hard to watch. It is really depressing. It's a depressing film. I felt so down after this. I was almost upset watching this movie because of the tragedies what happened to these people. But it's still a good time watch. It's still a good watch. It's a movie that you should watch, like Chandler's List, even though it's not a very watchable movie either. You gotta watch it at least once. You gotta watch, you gotta watch it at least once. Because it is a very impactful film, and it's so freaking good. It is amazing. It's, just, it's better than a lot of movies on this list, but the reason it's 25 for me, because I'll never watch it again. I'm so glad I watched it the one time, because it's such a great film, but I would never watch it again, because it's way too depressing for me. Coming number 24 is Finding Dory. Finding Dory is a really delightful film, actually. A lot of people didn't care for it. Some people thought it was a little overrated. And I, it's not better than Finding Nemo. I think I said it was almost as good as Finding Nemo in my review. Um, not so much. It's a very good movie, though. It's very delightful. The animation's great. I love the sea, the underwater sea world they bring in. It's so great. The new characters they bring, like in Hank, that octopus played by, oh my god, what the fuck's his name? Forget his name. The guy from, um, the guy from, uh, uh, Buried with Children and Modern Family, uh, whatever, I forget his name, but he's so great. He's probably, like, my favorite character in the film, and I love it's a story about Dory, because she has short-term memory. It talks about how she was, like, you know, got missing, how she, like, got separated from her family, and how she finds her family. It's a very touching moment and stuff, and you got Marlon and Nemo back, and it's really funny. It's really enjoyable. It's a good adventure film, and... Not as good as the, its predecessor, but I still find it a very delightful film. It's not amazing. It's not, like, the best Pixar film, but I enjoy it. And, yeah, it's definitely a good movie for kids and adults. And, yeah, I like it. Going to number 23 is Song of the Sea. Song of the Sea is actually number uh, 30, I think. Yeah, number 30 on the list. Yeah, I haven't been comparing during this ranking. Oh, well, uh, Song of the Sea is a really good movie. This is... Uh, Directed by the same director who gave us, oh my god, I forget the other animated film, but the animation style is so great. It is such beautiful animation. I love this sort of style of animation. It's gorgeous. I love that they got uh, Brendan Gleeson in this film. He's in all of the films like this, and so good. I love the story of uh, how these kids lost their mother. One kid hates their sibling, their, uh, their sibling because they think they're a mistake. They cause the death of their mother and stuff, and they find this other world and stuff, and it's a beautiful story. It's a great movie for kids. It might not, like, you know, it might not impact kids as much as I think it might, as, I, as it should, probably. If I was a kid watching this movie, I would love it, but a lot of kids are, you know, used to sort of Disney films. This movie might be a little too smart for some kids, but this would definitely be up my alley as a kid, because I watched a lot of Japanese anime films, which are also really smart films. 
The characters are great, the animation's great, it's very beautiful, it's very moving, it's very atmospheric, it's got great music, it's very mellow, it's very chill, it's a bit slow at times, again, maybe kids might not like that, but I think it's a damn great film, and I completely understand why it's on this top 30 list, it's so good. Coming in at number 22 is My Life is a Zucchini. My, Le my Life is a Zucchini is, <clears throat> this is a great film. Um, when I did my Oscar reactions, I got so annoyed, so pissed off that this was nominated over Your Name. And it shouldn't have, because it's not as good as Your Name, but I think I should have been more angry at The Red Turtle, because The Red Turtle is a worse film than My, my Life is a Zucchini. I actually finally got to watch this movie months ago, and it's so good. It's a very good movie about these kids in this orphanage and their friendship they build on each other. This is a very dark film. Like, this is not a kid's movie. There is a lot of, like, very mature content. There is even a bit of bad language and even brief nudity in the film. And it's basically about this kid and his mom. And, like, he, yeah, he loses his mother and he lost his father. And, yeah, he had a really rough life. And there's this other girl. She was, like, abused by her family. But then this, like, police officer, you know, befriends these kids and stuff. It's mostly about the orphanage they grew up in and all. The, the orphanage they go to and the friendship with all these kids and stuff and it's a really unique and very original film and the writing is so good the animation's fantastic it is a very uh uplifting in the ending but it's still at times very dark and a little too realistic for some people but i absolutely loved it i thought it was a great film not the best but still a great film Coming in at number 21 is Toy Story 2. Toy Story 2 is my least favorite out of the Toy Story trilogy, which some people, again, some people really have a, you know, like a big soft spot for Toy Story 2. I do too. I think it's great. I love Toy Story 2. I think it's a very good movie. Um, it's 100%, I think, on Rotten Tomatoes. It's weird how they do this ranking. I guess they go based off of the many votes they get, not just its rating, and Toy Story 2 is a great movie. I love that they brought into the new characters, you know, like Kelsey Grammer's character, um, The Prospect is it, and uh, they got in Jesse, and they got in uh, Bullseye, not Bullseye, um, yeah, and I love that it's a story about what the toys have to do after Andy is grown up. And, like, Woody in this movie gets, like, broken, and he doesn't want to play with them. Then he goes and gets captured by this crazy guy, Al's Toy Barn guy. And he gets, like, uh, brought to these other toys, Jesse and stuff, and the Prospect and Bullseye. And they're, like, these uh, rare toys from this TV show called Woody's Roundup. And basically, he can go to a museum in, like, Japan and be loved by kids forever or go back to Andy. And it's an interesting and very smart story and it's a really good movie it's a really good story and i love the characters if you love the characters from the first film first film you'll absolutely love this movie there was a lot of great comedy they're bringing zorg in this movie and they bring in another buzz lightyear who thinks he's the real buzz lightyear very funny they bring in barbie and stuff they do a tour around al's toy bar and it's really funny and it's not a great film it's just not my favorite there's a lot of good movies on this list i wanted to put it lower because i love toy Story so much but I love the other two more, so that's why I had to be on this spot. At number 20 is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is the very first animated Disney film ever made. So good. It's very good. The animation's great. Uh, it still holds up to this day. Uh, the dwarfs are still such awesome, timeless, creative characters. I love them all. I love how their personality is their name and stuff. Sneezy always sneeze. Happy's always happy. Doc is the leader. Grumpy's always grumpy. Dopey's really stupid. So good. The songs are great. The villain is so great. That evil queen is terrifying. She's like a manipulative bitch. And then when she turns into like the old lady, creepy as shit. And the way they kill her off in the ending is just so fucking badass. The only problems I have with it is the main character, Snow White. Even though she's an extremely likable character, she has little to no personality and does absolutely nothing interesting. And Prince Charming is even less interesting than she is. They have, like, no chemistry. I have no idea why they even get married. They spent, like, no time together. The movie is great thanks to its animation, its style, its villain, and its side characters. The animals, the amazing animals, and, of course, the seven dwarfs. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. I can't whistle really well. But yeah, still, it's a great film. It's an iconic film. This is what brought Disney to what it was right now. Like, if this movie was a failure, we would never have the, the great classics that we watch all the time. So it's all thanks to Snow White, and it is a great and very timeless film. Coming in at number 19 is the Lego movie. Yes, everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. 
Uh, the Lego Movie, uh, again, still to this day, I have no fucking idea why this movie was not nominated for Best Animated Feature at the Academy Awards. I don't know what the fuck when they were smoking. Just because they, there's like a real life person at the end when Will Ferrell comes? I don't, that's stupid. Um, this movie's great. I love it. The animation, and what Phil Lord and Chris Miller did was fantastic. I love these characters. I love that they brought in like a Batman, which spawned his own film. He's so freaking awesome in this movie. The freaking pirate's awesome. Emmett's awesome. Wild Style's awesome. What are you, a DJ? I freaking love, um, Morgan Freeman in this movie. He's freaking great. Uh, President Business, uh, Will Ferrell's fantastic. Uh, the good cop, bad cop, Liam Neeson, he's so great. These characters are just so freaking hilarious. The animation is just so fast and so slick. It's freaking amazing. It's so good. This movie is screams commercialized. This movie screams product placement. This movie is a Hollywood cash grab. And it worked. It was funny. It was smart. It was enjoyable. It's great for kids, adults, and everyone. It's amazing. This movie shouldn't have worked, but it did. Coming to number 18 is How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon is a, a fantastic film. It's one of my favorite DreamWorks films. I do like the sequel more, How to Train Your Dragon 2. I think that's a more mature and darker film, and I love how the characters evolve more in that one, and it doesn't rely on the cliches like this one does, because there are cliches. This movie is fantastic. This movie would be almost perfect, almost perfect, if it didn't have the cliches. Like, there is the liar revealed cliche, there's the stubborn father who doesn't listen and cliche and stuff. There are cliches and they ruin the film and this film is fucking perfect almost. This movie is so good. The animation is breathtaking. The flying scenes are fucking amazing. When he's flying on this dragon, when you see this in IMAX 3D, you feel like you're flying on Toothless yourself and it's so fucking good. The performances are fantastic. The voice acting, like Gerard Butler and Jay Baruchel, Jonah Hill, TJ Miller, Kristen Wiig, uh, America Ferreira, everyone does such good voice work. These characters are just so enjoyable to watch. And I love that it's about like these like barbarians and stuff. They fight dragons, but then they realize the dragons themselves aren't bad people. They are defending themselves from a more evil dragon. It's so good. This is a really great movie. I absolutely adore this film when I first watched it, and I've watched it like 20 times, and I can't get sick of it. This would be one of the great animated films of all time if it didn't have those cliches. I would actually even say it would be better than the second one if it didn't have those cliches, but because it has those cliches, it weighs it down a bit, but the movie's masterful, and it's so good. Coming to number 17 is Zootopia. Zootopia is a very recent one, actually, just like Inside Out. It's very recent. It's very current. came out last year. It's not my favorite movie that came out last year, the animated movies. I'll be getting to those, actually, coming up. Uh, all of them are on there, but... This is a great film. I love that it is a cop movie about racism. This is a very mature Disney film. There is a lot of good jokes, but it relies not on the jokes, but on the two lead characters. It relies on Jason Bateman's character and Jennifer Goodwin's character. Uh, it relies on these characters, uh, Officer Judy Hobbs and Nick Style. It relies on these two characters and their partnership with each other. She's a bunny police officer, but she's so small and she's so like uh, fragile and stuff, and they they almost like stereotype her that she cannot be a real police officer and they also stereotype uh, Nick because he is a fox they think he's a criminal he will break the law and stuff they deal with heavy stuff and racial things they also deal with like drug content and stuff it's a fascinating and very mature and very smart film, Zootopia, and I absolutely loved it. The animation's fantastic, there's great action in this movie, and I do love the two lead characters, Judy Hopps and Nick Style. The movie, again, it wasn't as good as the ones that came out last year, and there's a few moments that do come off a bit overly sentimental and near the ending and stuff, but the movie, all in all, is a great film, and it's a very mature film, and I do absolutely love it. I'm glad... Disney movies are taking more risks and putting more mature content because they know kids can't handle it. It's not like they put swearing in it, but they put mature things so kids can learn about it at a young age. And kudos to this film for doing that. Coming number 16 is Moana. Moana is another movie that came out last year. I did like this a little more than Zootopia because I just think it's a little more fun. It's got the cool musical numbers like You're welcome and how far I'll go and shiny. Great villain. I loved, I loved him in this movie. So good. 
And I love Dwayne Johnson. Do you know who thought Dwayne Johnson would be a really good singer and a really cool villain as Ma villain side character as Maui? Maui was such a great, enjoyable character. He's only an anti-hero in the film, and I loved him. I love the character of Moana. Moana's probably one of my favorite Disney princesses, even though she's not technically a Disney princess yet, but she should be. She is technically a princess. She's like part of a tribe and stuff. She's the hero. She you know, she uh, does an act of hero heroes, hero heroism, heroism. She saves the town, saves all the villages. She, uh, you know, gets Tefiti back and stuff. And yeah, you know, all that shit. And it's a great movie. I love the story. I love the songs. The animation's fantastic. And yeah, it's a great movie. Moana's a great role model for all girls out there, just like Elsa and uh, Mulan and Belle, like all the great Disney princesses. And yeah. Uh, Zootopia was a much smarter film, and I still think it's a better film, but I just liked Moana a little better. Number 15 is Wally. Wally. Yeah, Wally, again, I've talked about it again. I just talked about this pretty recently, and great film. Again, I think the first half of Wally is solid. It is perfection. There's no dialogue. It's just Wally on this like dystopian Earth. The world is like gone to shit. It could do to pollution. The whole move, the whole world is filled with garbage, and it's just this little robot, you know, you know, little watching old movies, listening to music, and cleaning up the garbage and stuff. Then he runs into this other robot named Eve, and they get this sort of like romance with each other, like an Adam and Adam and Eve thing on Earth. That's beautiful. That's the best part of Wally. Then when he goes to space and meets the humans on the floaties and stuff and he has to save the day, it kinda gets a little worse, but the movie's still, as a whole, a fantastic and brilliant Pixar film. If the whole movie was just Wally on Earth, I think this would be one of the best, but the movie still as a whole is still brilliant. Coming number 14 is Toy Story 3. Yes, yeah, we're almost halfway done, guys. Uh, Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 is, again, m one of my favorites. It's probably, it's my second favorite. I know it's most people's favorite Toy Story movie because it's got the sad ending and towards the harsh strings. It's got them in the furnace holding each other's hands. It's really dark for a kid's movie. It's great. I love the lots of hug hugging bear, baby, the boss baby, the baby boss. Uh, not boss baby, not Alec Baldwin. The baby. The baby's fucking terrifying, that monkey's terrifying, and lots of hugging bear. Great villains in the film. I love Ken, Michael Caton, genius. I love, again, this is the story that Toy Story 2 was building up to. Andy got older. He doesn't need his toys anymore. He needs to let go. And most importantly, they all need to let go of him. Mostly Woody. So long, partner. Tears. Just tears. Tears. And I love, I love this movie. I love that they go to this daycare with all these, like, twisted children that don't know how to play with the toys. And it's run by this, like, gangster bear called Lotso Hugging Bear. And they have to, like, break out of this daycare to get back home to Andy. And then, spoilers at the ending, Andy gives them away because Woody writes on the note that he should give them away to the girl. What's her name? I don't know. Bonnie? Is her name Bonnie? He gives them to her, and then Andy says goodbye to his toys by playing with them one last time, and then so long, partner. Very sad, very emotional climax, because we grew up with these characters. We grew up like Andy with these toys and stuff, and it is a very sad and heart-wrenching film. And yeah, it's one of the best anime films of this decade, and I completely understand why it's on this list. It's so good. <clears throat> Coming number 13 is Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo, directed by Andrew Stanton. What Andrew Stanton did with this movie is so great. How he does the underwater worlds look fantastic. You feel like you're in this water, this ocean, with all these characters. Love them. I loved, uh, freaking uh, Dory was so funny. She's great Finding Finding Dory, but she is laugh out loud hysterical in this movie. Like, where are my parents? At least I think I do. Hmm, where are they? Can I help you? <laughs> so funny. What do we do? We swim, we swim. What do we do? We swim, we swim. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. So great. I love Marlon, voice, voice by Albert Brooks. He's so great. I love Nemo. The people, the, what Finding Dory was missing was the the aquarium people, the, the fish tank people, the fish tank fishes, the, the whole gang of them, the, all the people Nemo meets in the fish tank. All of them are amazing. They are my favorite characters in Finding Nemo. These fish tank people, one of them's voiced by Willem Dafoe with this black fish with all these scars on his face. There's this one girl who thinks her reflection is her twin sister. And there's this one guy who just loves bubbles. Bubbles, 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 my bubbles. <laughs> one guy doesn't know how to speak English, he only can speak French and stuff. And the other guy's, oh, oh, shark bait, oh, oh, shark bait. <laughs> 
I love these characters in the fish tank. They are the best, the best characters. I also love, you know, like Crush and stuff, and the sharks, Bruce and stuff. I love these characters. That's why I loved Finding Nemo more than Finding Dory. I like the characters more, and I just loved how, like, more intense it gets. It gets really intense. And it's also a story about, you know, you can't always be an overprotective father. And that's what Marlon learns in Finding Nemo, and it's a very good message that a lot of parents should realize. Like, you can't always protect your kids from everything. And I love it. I love that it's a movie based on a father's love, and it's such a great and delightful film. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorites. Winner number 12 is The Incredibles. The Incredibles, this could be an easy one to go through. It's directed by Brad Bird. It's a superhero movie. I've been dying for a goddamn sequel for years now. It delivers all the goods. It's a, it's a superhero family. It, it gives you everything you want. It's got a great villain played by Syndrome. It's a great story. All these characters are fantastic. Mr. Incredible, Elastigirl, Violet, Dash, Jack-Jack, all fantastic. It's a superhero Pixar film. It gives you everything you need. Amazing. Coming to number 11 is Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Who Framed Roger Rabbit is directed by Robert Zemeckis. If Zemeckis didn't do Back to the Future, this would probably be like its masterpiece. This is the first movie I get. It's not technically an animated film because it's a live action film that has animation in it, but I get where they're going with this. It's a live action story with all the tunes and stuff. It has all the tunes. It has a lot of Disney characters. It's got Bugs Bunny. It's got Tweety Bird. It's got Mo Peep. It's got Betty Boop. And it's got new ones like Roger Rabbit and stuff. Jessica Rabbit. It's got Christopher Lloyd in this movie. Oh my god, what a great fucking villain he is. Do you remember, Eddie? When I killed your brother and I talked just like this. <laughs> Such a great villain. And yeah, it's great. I had to combine the animation with the live action, with the CGI, blending the CGI animation with the real life people. Fantastic. This movie is groundbreaking, revolutionary, and revolu revolutionized CGI just like Jurassic Park and Terminator 2 did. It's amazing. Coming number 10 is Inside Out. Yes, I just talked about this in my last ranking of the IMDb, not the IMDb, the last Ron Trails list. I love this movie. It doesn't deserve to be the best movie of all time, but it is smart. And I love it. it's about emotions in a girl's head and dealing with, uh, dealing with moving and stuff and dealing with being in a new environment and how sadness is just as important as being happy and stuff. And yeah, I love this. It's a smart, compelling film. It's not fully original because it's like Osmos' Jones like, meets Herman's head. But what, what, what Pete Doctor did with this film was fantastic. Bing Bong dying was sad. Riley accepting her like, new life at the ending with her parents is also heart-wrenchingly sad. And yeah, I love this film. It's a very compelling, very visually striking film. And yeah, it's fantastic. Coming number nine is Ratatouille. Ratatouille is, again, a favorite of mine. Brad Bird, what he does. Anytime Brad Bird tackles animation, it's so good. The animation's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And Anton Ego is one of my favorite animated, animated characters of all time. The, how this movie ends is perfection. I love a story about cooking, and I love that it's about a mouse who loves to cook. Simple and brilliant. Coming number eight is Kubo and the Two Strings. Kubo and the Two Strings just came out last year. And again, my favorites, this is probably one of my favorite stop motion anime films of all time. It's not quite the Paranorman and Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas level, but it is close. It's a great samurai story with amazing characters. Kubo, plays, uh, played by Art Parkinson's from uh, Game of Thrones, Ragon Stark. God damn it. Anyways, uh, it's so good. I love Kubo. I love uh, Monkey and Mantis, uh, played by Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Theron. Ray Fiennes is the villain. So freaking good. You got like, George Takei in the film. It's visually, visually amazing. It's, the, the, it's some of the best visuals you'll see in an animated film. It's a very mature story. Uh, Rooney Mara also is the ants. It's so good. I absolutely love this film. It's just a really great, fun action adventure story, and I absolutely love it. Coming number seven is the very first Toy Story film. Yes, this, I, I, everyone says Toy Story 3 is the best Toy Story film. The best. 
My favorite is Toy Story. I grew up with Toy Story. I used to always watch Toy Story every time I came home from like elementary school, from kindergarten, grade one, two, and three. I always popped in the VHS of Toy Story. I've seen Toy Story God knows how many times, and I can never get sick of it. I love the comedy. This is the only one written by a Coen brother and Joss Whedon. It's got just so it's such funny characters, such funny jokes. And I love that it's about a rivalry. These two toys, Buzz and Woody, competing for this owner's love, and it's just so funny. The adventure is so funny. It can be really dark and twisted at times, too. It's just so awesome. and just It's so timeless to me. It has so much nostalgia for me. I just personally love it more than all the Toy Stories, and that's why it's one of my favorites. Coming number six is Up. Yes, number six is Up for me, because everyone knows, everyone knows in my ranking of the Pixar movies that this is my favorite Pixar film of all time. And it's not because of just the opening. The opening is one of the greatest openings to a film ever. It's like no dialogue, and you know everything about Mr. Fredrickson and what happened to his wife Ellie and stuff. It's really sad. But I love the story itself with these characters, Doug the dog, Kevin the freaking flamingo, and of course Nelson, uh, Nelson, Russell. Russell and Mr. Frederick, Mr. Fredrickson's relationship is absolutely beautiful. The writing and the direction of this movie is absolutely sensational. It's one of the few anime films that was nominated for Best Picture, and it's so good. It just hits me with every core of my body. It just hits me. It hits every emotion. I'm sad. I'm angry. And I'm happy. I'm just, it makes me feel all the emotions, and that's why it's my favorite. It's my favorite Pixar movie of all time, and one of my favorite animated films. Coming number five is Your Name. Yes, Your Name. This this movie was robbed, robbed at the Academy Awards. This movie should have been nominated for Best Anime Feature. I don't know why it wasn't. What Mikado Shinke did with this film was brilliant. I don't want to do, I don't want to rant about this movie. I did a whole review of it, so go check the review out. This is a perfection movie. This is almost one of the greatest anime films I have seen. This is one of the best anime films this entire decade. The story is so pure, and it's about a guy and a girl switching bodies. That is not completely original, but they make it original, this film. How the film is written and directed is so funny and deep and moving and dramatic. The animation is stunning. The story is beautiful. The ending doesn't spoof feelings to you, and it's fantastic. It is a damn near masterpiece. Coming number four is Beauty and the Beast. Yes, Beauty and the Beast, again, a film everyone knows. This is one of my favorite Disney films of all time. Got the Blu-ray right there. What the remake did is just basically copy the, the Disney film, which I completely understand because you can't fix something that's already perfect. It's, it's amazing. It's got the best musical numbers. It's got the best characters. It's got the best dance sequences. It's got the best animation. Anything that you love about animated Disney films, especially like during the Disney Renaissance, Beauty and, the, Beauty and the Beast did the best. Belle's an amazing character, the best Disney princess. Beast is the best Disney prince because he's such a great and awesome badass character. Gaston is one of the best Disney villains out there. It, they do the vice versa, that the Beast is the good guy, and Gaston, the human, the good-looking guy, the town hero, is the true villain. He is the true Beast. The best side characters ever in a Disney film, you got Cogsworth, you got Lemire, you got Mrs. Potts, you got Chip, you got Maurice and stuff, and they're all fantastic. Even LeFou. LeFou's great, too. I did like Josh Gad, but this LeFou is still enjoyable, and just... It's my one of my favorite anime films of all time, and one of the best Disney films you'll ever watch. Coming number three is The Iron Giant. Yes, Brad Bird, once again, I love The Incredibles. I even love Tomorrowland. I love Ghost Protocol. I love Ratatouille. But what he did with The Iron Giant was compelling. It was riveting. It was masterful. The best performance by Vin Diesel, and he doesn't really say anything. Superman. Basically about a boy, he befriends a big, huge metal giant, and they spawn this amazing friendship. It is so compelling, it is so deep, it is so brilliantly directed, absolutely love it. This is one of the greatest anime films you will ever watch, and it is so underrated. This movie tanked in the box office when it came out in 1999, and I'm glad it got more and more of a following as it kept coming out and stuff, and when it, the DVD releases and the Blu-ray releases... People, just keep watching it. Show your kids this movie. Everyone needs to watch this movie because this movie is its for everybody. It's just such a beautiful and amazing, timeless story with great characters, great voice performances, and just an all-around entertaining, engaging film and one of my favorites. Coming number two is Fantasia. Yes, Fantasia. Again, a movie that I guess a lot of people... I'm sorry, got to adjust my seat. 
Whew, okay, yeah. Uh, a movie that a lot of people are not into because it is an orchestra movie. It is just a bunch of vignettes. It's a bunch of animated shorts playing to an orchestra. And I guess it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Some people do not like that. They want a cohesive story. And I get that. But I think this is the greatest, the greatest animated Disney film I've ever watched. It's one of the best. It's amazing. It's fantastic. My favorite is Night on Bald Mountain with Satan and stuff and all the people praying to him and shit. And, of course, uh, The Sorcerer's Apprentice with the big emails that bum, bum, bum. Ba, ba, ba. Fantastic. Uh, everything about Fantasia is brilliant to me. I think the music, the orchestra, the score, the animation is just stunning and gorgeous. They tried to duplicate it with Fantasia 2000. Still a good movie, but they just couldn't quite live up to the classic original. As a whole, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite Disney... It's the my favorite Disney film of all time. And it's my second favorite animated film of all time. And my number one favorite animated film on this top 30 best anime films of all time list, according to Rotten Tomatoes, my number one favorite is actually my number one favorite anime film of all time, and one of my favorite movies of all time, which is Spirited Away. Spirited Away is directed, written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki. This is the greatest Japanese animated film I've ever watched, the greatest animated film I've ever watched, and one of my favorite films of all time in general. Again, a movie I've praised to death, I've talked to death about it, I've talked about the characters, I've talked about the atmosphere, I've talked about how it's directed, I've talked about one of my favorite scenes in the whole film, the train sequences. Everything about this movie is amazing. Again, I don't want to gush over it because you all know my thoughts and opinions of it. It's amazing. And I'm so glad it's on this top 30 list. It's only, what is it, number... 28 on the list, which it shouldn't be. It should be number one. It should be everyone's number one. I'm, I'm told you. It's all opinion stuff, but everyone knows this is my one of my favorite films of all time. And according to this top 30 list, it's my number one favorite on this list. <clears throat> so yeah, that was my ranking of all the films, the top 30 best animated films of all time, according to Rotten Tomatoes. Thank you for sticking with me this whole time. My God, this was long. My ass is really sweaty right now. I'm like pouring sweat right now. And my guy, I might need a glass of water because I think my throat is getting really dry. But yeah, that was my ranking of all 30, 30 of those films. So yeah, give me your thoughts and opinions. Do you agree with those 30 films? Do you think those are the 30 best animated films of all time? Do you think Ron Tomatoes nailed it? Or do you think they completely got it wrong? And also, what is your ranking of all these movies? From your least favorite to your favorite, what is your favorite? What's your least favorite? Give me your thoughts and opinions. Comment below. Let me know. And as always, for this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.